Good morning, everybody. It is day three of Enchanted April. And of all the Aprils we've ever had, <laughs> I hope that of enchantment in this one. So I'm using a different tripod today. I'm trying to get the right lighting and all that. Learning so much. There, I got to, I got to press on waves since I'm a little closer to the camera today. So, learning. Thank you, God, that as long as we live, we get to keep learning. And I'm learning lots and lots of things right now, and I'll bet you are too. So I want to read you first the message for the day for Enchanted April. This comes from a book that I wrote way back in 2004. It came out in December of 2004. It was called Younger by the Day, which is a day book. And people write to me and say, I still read it every day. I start in January. And go through Younger by the Day yet again. So gosh, you guys must be really young by now. Okay, here's the message. The way you sign your name, the way you fold the laundry, the straightness of the stamp on the envelope, making your bed, even though no one will be home to see it, these details and hundreds like them are little things that give you a little edge. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What can we do right now when most of us are at home and maybe we're scared and we certainly don't know what's gonna happen in the near future, much less the far future, to find that little bit of edge. So to me, what we're talking about here are the details of life. And that's a funny word, details, because we've all heard the phrase, God is in the details. And then we've all heard the phrase, the devil is in the details. And I think it's probably true on all counts, because the kinds of details that seem like if there's a devil, he's really in there, are these ones that make me feel stressed and frantic. And for me, the definition of stress is you're supposed to be doing two things at one time, or two people want something from you at the same time, or somebody just emailed you and then just called to find out if you got the email. <laughs> Those kinds of things are just so stressful. And I say the details are driving me crazy. I had one this morning, just before I started this. You see, I started a couple of minutes late. I got the buzzer from the doorman. And you know, there are certain buzzers that are more annoying than others. <laughs> and that one just goes, Bleh! I mean, it's, it's a really nasty, almost like an alarm kind of sound. And you know what, right now, I mean, I'm in New York City, we're the epicenter of coronavirus and all that at the moment anyway. And so I'm not up for really irritating sounds <laughs> right now. And it screeches into my living room. And then the doorman, bless his heart, the people that work in this building are dealing with so much. And he was saying, your grocery delivery came and you have to get it right now because we don't have room for it. Well, it actually was supposed to have arrived four hours ago, <laughs> but of course the grocery people are late. Everybody is on a weird schedule. so. I was looking at, okay, I have three minutes to set up for the Facebook Live, but I have to be downstairs to pick up the groceries now. And I'm not talking like a bag of groceries. I'm actually doing things that I thought I would never, ever, ever in my life do. And that is the stockpile thing. So this is like, you know, it's going to be a long winter, get all the groceries you can possibly get. So I had no choice but to go down there and relieve this lovely young man of all the stuff. And then when I got it up to my door, I had to get it in. And then I had to get the cart back down, all the while <laughs> trying to stay six feet away from uh, my neighbors. So it was a stress thing. And yet, if I can take the stress detail and turn it into a kind of charming detail, then everything changes. So what do I mean by that? It means that after I finish having this lovely time with you, and thank you all so much for being here, I get to put the groceries away in a way that makes sense to me. 
I get to put the groceries away in a way that makes me feel organized, which is not my natural best trait, but sometimes when I do it, it just feels amazing. And I also get to delight in the really wonderful sense of having food. When I was a little girl back in Kansas City, we used to get our groceries delivered from Joe's Market. And I would sometimes just stand in front of the pantry and stare when we just had a grocery delivery. I don't know if it means I starved in a past life or what. I just know I feel good when there are groceries. And so I'm gonna take this like irritation that came from, oh my gosh, there's so much to do and I have to run downstairs and I have to be upstairs, blah, 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 and turn it into what a joy that not only do I have all this wonderful food, my goodness, but I can put it away in a way that makes me happy and I can think about what I'll do with it. So that's one of the other details I wanted to talk about that's at least coming up for me right now. And you can tell me if you're having similar experiences. But I find that like when there aren't a lot of groceries, because we get things delivered here, but we have to wait a while to get a, a space. So night before last, my husband said, I don't know what we're going to eat because we don't have any food. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> we have food because he looks at it like we don't have anything that I can put between two pieces of bread and make a vegan sandwich out of. But I like the idea of trying to make something out of nothing. I remember in Catholic school, the nun would say that that's how God made the earth. He made something out of nothing. And so I just said to my husband, you watch, you see what, what I can make. So what I ended up doing was literally making Thanksgiving, kinda, sorta. Oh, bless you, David, kid. Wow, we go back. Um, so, so we had lettuce, because I made sure of that, because the last time we ran out of fresh stuff, and that was weird. Do you ever get that way? If you don't have any green stuff, you just feel like starvation is imminent. So I did make sure we had a lot of, um, of, of lettuce and I made a kind of um, uh, Caesar dressing out, out of cashews. And then I made green bean casserole from the 10 Talents cookbook old, old vegan cookbook. I raised my daughter on the recipes from this book. And I always make green bean casserole for Thanksgiving. That's the only time I ever do it. But well, you know, you do it for Thanksgiving, you do it for <laughs> what somebody wrote to me and called quiet quarantine. So quiet quarantine dish. And then I saw that I had some wild rice. And I'm not really a wild rice fan. I don't tend to buy it, but it had been in one of those goodie bags from some kind of vegan fundraiser in the last year. So I made the wild rice and I looked online to see, well, what do you put if you're gonna make like wild rice stuffing? Well, it was all stuff I didn't have. It was mushrooms and um, I, I don't know, other stuff that just I didn't have. Oh, onions, that's it. You've gotta have onions. If you're gonna make anything with a recipe every recipe on earth except for maybe cake has onions in it. So I did have broccoli and I had one and a half scallions, that's sort of an onion, and um, I have raisins. And I thought people put raisins in stuffing, don't they? So I mixed all that stuff together and kind of made another little Thanksgiving-y casserole. So we had a very grateful dinner even when there was nothing to fix. So to me, that's creative and that's sweet. And that's one of those things that you can do to give yourself an edge. Now let's see, I actually put notes because I didn't want to leave anything out. Oh yes, I am a terrible blow dryer. I'm just, I don't understand how anybody can put a thing up here on their hair and make their hair look good because I can't do it. So when we were put on lockdown, I was just about ready for a haircut. I'd had it on my, my list, you know, call, make a haircut appointment. And so it was starting to kind of grow out a little bit. I usually have a bob like to hear. And so I had this hair that was sort of overgrown and looked awful, especially because I don't know how to blow dry. And so what I did, was watch breakfast at Tiffany's. It was my birthday, so that was one of my birthday gifts to myself. And I decided, okay, if I'm gonna have more hair than I'm used to having for the past 30 years, I'm gonna do it like Audrey Hepburn. 
So I watched that movie and I paid a lot of attention to her French twists and how she put her hair up. And then I ordered a couple of books that I actually had in the past. You know how you kind of have books and pass them on. And uh, one is called Audrey Style and the other is called What Would Audrey Do? And those were books by, let me get the author's name here. I actually went to one of her book signings once. Pamela Keough, Pamela Clark Keough, Audrey Style and What Would Audrey Do? And so one of my little projects for having some details that actually nourish me during this time is, you know, try to do some stuff that Audrey would have done. So it's not like, oh my God, I can't go get my hair blown. It's like, that's all right. I can still uh, do something even better. The other thing I wanted to share with you, and this will be my, my last little bit on uh, today's thought, is kind of making some lemonade out of lemons. So one of my lemons right now is that I seem to wake up really early in the morning, earlier than I planned. So the alarm was set very strategically for 6.15 because I had checked that sunrise is 6.35 and I figured if I go out just before sunrise to walk the dog, there will be fewer people on the street to have to stay six feet away from. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> thank you, Sangamithra, thank you so much. So, um, I got up at five o'clock instead. And usually if I get up that early, I try to go back to sleep and I decide to please let me go out of sleep. But this morning instead, I just got up. And so before it was light enough to walk the dog, I was able to get in my morning meditation. I put in a load of laundry, which means walking down the hall out there, you know, with the mask and the thing, and cleaned up some things and then when I was ready for another commitment that I had a 715 Zoom meeting, I just felt like I had the day under control. So I just invite you to find ways today to have your day under control and uh, to have some joy and some fun in it. So I have a couple of announcements. And one is great big. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here and I hope that you share it with everybody because this really is big. This is, I guess one would say, five years in the making. As of yesterday, a prayer for compassion, Thomas Jackson's beautiful, beautiful feature length documentary to introduce the ideas of expanded compassion, reverence for life, and vegan living to people who identify as religious or spiritual has gone up on Amazon Prime. Oh my goodness, back in 2015, Thomas Jackson called into the Main Street Vegan live radio show. Uh, it, we had a book giveaway that day and he won the book. And then he also left a message with my engineer and when I called him back, he said, I want to make this film. Will you produce it? And I thought, produce a film? That's sort of like, will you climb Kilimanjaro like tomorrow? I thought, I don't know how to produce a film. But then he said, it's going to be about veganism and spirituality. Well, how can I say no? Those are my two passions in life. So I have learned from my daughter that one should always say yes. My daughter is an actor and a stunt performer. And she was in, do you remember that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet? It was a depressing divorce movie. It was called Revolutionary Road. And she was there just as an extra, just as a background person that day. But uh, Sam Mendes, the director, saw her and liked how she looked and said, do you know how to do swing dancing? And she said, yes, I do. She had never done swing dancing in her life. Now, she was a dancer. I mean, she had done ballet and all that kind of thing. But she just said yes and took a chance that maybe she knew swing dancing and that she could do this thing. So she did. And she gets royalties to this day for being a featured dancer in that movie. So, you know, you don't always have to learn from those who come before. Sometimes you can learn from those who come after. So I have learned from my daughter to just say yes. And uh, it, it tends to work. So I said yes to Thomas Jackson. And 
he started on a grand adventure that took him to India and Morocco and all across the U.S. several times. And it started me on the grand adventure of getting to know the movie business. So we had our world premiere in New York City on Ash Wednesday of 2019. And then we had a wonderful premiere in London last May. And uh, Thomas Jackson and two of our other producers, Dr. Silas Rao, a lot of you know him from Climate Healers org and also Jerome Flynn who played Braun on Game of Thrones <laughs> they did a two-week tour of India and we had some theatrical release for the past year but what we've been waiting for is the time that we would be online so that the world could find a prayer for compassion and that is happening right now so I want to tell you a couple of things about that Oh, thank you, Kandira. Bless you. So if you've got Amazon Prime, you can just go there and watch it. Now, let me give you a hint. Don't go into Amazon and write a prayer for compassion because you'll get a bunch of other stuff. You need to write a prayer for compassion film and then you can watch it on your computer, watch it on your TV. I've actually watched it both ways. It's so exciting to see. So that is right now. Uh, it's also available um, for rental on, on Amazon if you don't have Amazon Prime and also for rental um, on Vimeo. But if you're like in the restaurant business and you're just not spending anything right now that you can't eat, uh, Thomas Jackson, our wonderful um, filmmaker can actually send you a private uh, 48 hour link so that you could watch it for free without Amazon Prime. So uh, you can just contact me and I'll send your um, request on to him. And, uh, da -da, and I'm going to be doing a series of uh, webinars, a series of Zoom webinars about aspects of the film. So I'm going to be interviewing mostly people who were in the film, but also other people who have an understanding of the vegan life and also have um, a religious or spiritual path. And we're going to talk about the specific paths and their relationship to what we think of as vegan ideals, um, care of the body and uh, concern for the planet. And obviously, um, reverence for life, the idea that life in all its forms is sacred. So we will be talking just as we have in the movie. Um, there are people represented uh, in um, Native American spirituality, uh, Christianity, uh, Protestant, Catholic, Evangelical, Buddhism, um, Jainism, Hinduism, uh, practically every religion. We don't have a Mormon. I'm so sorry, because there are elements in Mormonism that, that uh, talk about being vegetarian, certainly eating less meat. That may be the only religion people have actually heard of that we've left out. So uh, we're going to do this series of webinars, and I'm going to start with interviewing Thomas Jackson, the filmmaker, and that will be this coming Sunday, so I guess that is today's Friday. So day after tomorrow, 1230 Eastern Time, 1130 Central, 1030 Mountain, 930 Pacific. And I'm not sure about Greenwich Mean Time right now because I know we're closer, I think, or further than we usually are in time apart. But anyway, 1130 Eastern Time. So here's how you get in on that. Just contact me. Victoria at MainStreetVegan.net and just say, I want the Zoom link or I want to join you guys on Sunday or whatever. And um, about half an hour uh, prior to going live on Zoom, I will send you the link and we can all talk about truly the holiness of knowing that we're all one and whatever we can do for one another is a really good thing. Thank you all so much for being part of this. Please tell your friends. I would love it if by the 30th of April, we have uh, lots of people feeling that even now, life can indeed be enchanting. Bye all, have a great day.